so you know how a few days ago I said that when I was reviewing Kimberly of Herbs and Berries, you know, footage for her lotion challenge, that I was just tickled pink that she was singing throughout the whole thing. And I was making, you know, my soap and doing, you know, my stuff while I was listening to that. And I started singing along because it was delightful and she was singing Disney tunes. Of course, I'm going to sing along. Disney is my jam, baby. This soap is that soap that I was pouring for sure. And so I thought that it might be fun to maybe include some music, you know, as proof of me singing. So, I, you know, that I wasn't lying to you weirdly, because some people seem to think that people exist on the Internet just to gaslight people and lie. But, you know, I could maybe drop that. So that's like a weird Easter egg, right? Stick around for the whole video and maybe you'll find me singing somewhere if I decide to put it in. That, of course, has nothing to do with the video and what we are making or talking about today. I just thought it was fun that, you know, when I was editing this video, I went, oh, yeah, that was that was the bar that I was pouring while I was editing Kimberly stuff. Yeah. So I will tell you what we are making today in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for week 19 of year three. And today we are talking about false trace and emulsion and showing you examples of all of those things. And I know we've talked about this on the channel before, but I've been getting a tub load of questions about false trace and emulsion, both within the Discord and DMs, but also on comments of videos. So I thought it might be time for a nice refresh. And we will be doing so while I pour the watermelon soap because, you know, it's time to do that thing. You Do you have your summer soaps ready? They ready? You ready to go? No pressure. It's just around the corner. Just saying. Let's get to the video and we can talk all things false trace, emulsion, and all of the jazz. Okay, refresh time. Now, for this, the oils are hot. The lye was cool. The lye was around 60 degrees. The oils was, were around 120-ish degrees. And I am stirring for a total of maybe 12 seconds so far. And the batter is already getting thick. But I want to stop and really watch the batter here. You see how it's starting to separate and it's becoming grainy looking. It seems like maybe it might be an emulsion or maybe even trace based on the thickness of the batter. But as I took the stick out and inspected it, it started to separate, which means we are not at the emulsion stage yet. Now that is an example of false trace because of the temperature of and the temperature difference really between the oils and the lye solution. And even now, still, you can see the separation. It is getting thicker for sure that soap batter is something that i would say yeah this is like getting too close to medium trace i don't want to mess with this i'm going to stop it still wasn't an emulsion now as you see here we're finally at a stable emulsion that there's no separation there's no graininess that you can see on the head of the stick blender and so first and foremost emulsion is something that you definitely need to learn to find and look for to be really great in your soap making endeavors. There are so many, you know, intricate pores and stuff that maybe you've tried and you just can't figure it out. And you see other people trying to do this and they figure it out and they have a beautiful pour. It's not about them being a better soap maker or even necessarily nailing the technique so much as it is knowing your different levels of the thickness of your batter. 
and that all starts with an emulsion. Now, do you believe the number one thing that will make you a better soap maker and really enhance your artistry as well as just ensuring that your batches are all going to end up, you know, soap without any problematic lie heavy areas or whatever is learning the different stages that you're going to find the soap batter in. And so that's what we are talking about today, as well as, you know, some weird ways that people are defining emulsion and like saponification. So first up, what is emulsion? Isn't it just the same thing as saponification? No, in an emulsion, essentially what you are doing is you are taking two things that don't like combining together and you are making sure that they are like dispersed and suspended within each other. So in this case, it's your water and your fats, right? As we know, oil and water, they do not like to mix. They will separate from each other. But in order to actually achieve saponification, we have to get them in the state of emulsion and keep it there long enough for saponification to occur. For that extra bit, the lye that is in your water to start doing its magic with the, you know, the, the fatty acids and converting this to what we now know as soap, the end product. We don't want the oil to separate from the water and it to you know, sink to the bottom and the water to rise to the top because the lye won't have enough access to the actual fatty acids for saponification to be achieved. So no, saponification and emulsion are not the same thing. The emulsion comes first and is kind of required in order for saponification to occur. Yeah, one of the first things I do in my soap making masterclasses, you know, with people is to make sure that they understand and they start looking for emulsion. And we have entire, you know, sections strictly on that, especially when you're dealing with situations like I just was, right? You saw that I'd only mix that for maybe 10, 15 seconds and it was already getting very thick. Well, that's a false trace. And so A, Use your common sense when you are making soap. If you've used this recipe before and you know it normally takes longer to get to trace than what you just experienced, 10 to 15 seconds, let's go ahead and stop. Let's see what else could be the problem here, right? And it's not a whole bunch of unknowns when it comes to, you know, an emulsion in soap or saponification. There aren't a whole bunch of things that could have possibly gone wrong, right? Realistically, there are just three. Now, and the first is going to be temperature. Generally speaking, the hotter you pour, the faster you're going to hit emulsion or trace. Or, you know, conversely, the cooler you pour, the longer it will take to get to emulsion or to a trace. But as I just said at the beginning of all of this, my lye solution was very, very cool and my oils were at 120 degrees. That's the real reason why they say in all the blogs and all the things, why you should keep your oils and your lye solution within 10 degrees of each other. Because really, if they are too far apart, there you do run the risk of having essentially a shock to the system, right? And things are tightening up instead of expanding to, you know, start emulsion and saponification. So that dissimilarity between the two temperatures can produce false trace. In a false trace scenario, the solution, the fix is reasonably easy. Stop blending, watch, See if they're separating and if the oils and the water are separating, then stir it with a whisk or with your, you know, stick blender or whatever. The batter will loosen up and then you can continue on. Don't assume that just because the batter is thick right away that you've hit an emulsion because in those instances, you haven't. Now, temperature generally, I do recommend, you know, soaping at lower temperatures. So anywhere between like 70 and 90 degrees is great because... Unfortunately, with a lot of the oils and butters that we use, we do need to heat them up in order to liquefy them. This particular recipe, having my lye solution at 60 degrees and my oil so very hot in order to melt everything that's in this, this oil solution, I was not going to be able to soap within 10 degrees of my lye solution. So do keep that in mind when you are leaving a lye out overnight to cool. While it's a great idea for sure, you are going to run the risk of false trace. But knowing that going in will not have you stressing out in the morning when you go to, you know, pour your soap. Now, the second thing that really affects emulsion and trace would be the water content. And this is why I encourage people to soap at, you know, 2.4 or at least two times the water to the lye. And also why I soap all of my soaps, well, the majority of them, at 2.4 times water. Because the more water you have in the batch, 
the longer you have to work with the batter. And we saw that in a lot of the examples when we were doing all about, you know, water discounting and everything. So feel free to go back and check out that playlist to look at that and see how true that is. The water does impact this. And so to that, if you do find your soap batter is overly thick and you really want to do a specific pour with the oils and the butters and the colors and everything that you've already, you know, prepared, add some water to the batch. Going back to the temperature bit, your water should be warmer. Because again, once you start this whole emulsion thing and the fatty acids and the lye solution are doing their thing, it's creating an exothermic reaction. So it's heating up. And so back to the whole shock to the system, right? If you're just pouring some ice cold water in there, you may not get the results that you're hoping for. Most of the time you will, but I recommend having some room temperature water or some warmer waters to add to your, you know, batter when you have already hit, you know, a trace or whatever, and you're just trying to loosen up your batter long enough to, you know, finish your pour. And the third and final factor that can really impact emulsion or trace and how quickly you achieve any of these stages is unfortunately the most complicated. And that would be all of the external factors, the things that you have put into your soaps that could accelerate this entire process. And so that's why I kind of left it for the end. So I have a little bit more time to talk about it during the cut. So what are the things that can accelerate trace? Well, we do know that sugars can accelerate trace for sure. We do know that certain fragrance oils can accelerate trace. And if you are buying from a reputable fragrance company, it will say that on their website. We do know that certain essential oils can accelerate trace. We do know that clays can accelerate trace, especially depending on the type of clay that you're using. And so Combating that would, I guess, first and foremost be to add more water. Yet another reason why I soap at 2.4 times water. It's a lie, you know, because I need time to work and do pretty designs and swirls and I make exclusively clay soaps. I put boatloads of clay into all of my recipes. And so increasing your water definitely helps. For other items like sugar or alcohols or what have you, um, again, increasing the water also does help. Soaping at low temperatures definitely helps. Having slow moving oils within the batch helps to a, helps a bit. I don't know. Like there are a lot of theories about that out there. Like you really need like 70% slow moving liquid oils in your recipe in order to achieve really good swirls while working with beers and wines and stuff. But honestly, I have been doing some amazing swirls with my big bubble blend, my lots of lather blend for you know, like the past three or four years. And that's 66%, you know, coconut and palm. And so I think it really does have more to do with the amount of water that you're using as well as, you know, the temperatures that you're soaping at. And also most importantly, realizing when you have found emulsion and stopping there, giving yourself plenty of time to work your colors into the batch, to get your scent in, and you know to do your fancy pours if that's what you're wanting to do to the flip side of that however you don't have to do fancy pours if you know that you are going to be working with a fragrance or a clay or something that is going to accelerate lean into it make the pour simple make that pour a you know a layered bar instead of a swirly bar just work with the constraints that you know that you're going to have you know moving going into it but do that if for the first time ever something accelerates because you've used it for the first time ever, my first suggestion would be to add some more water so you can get through the pour and then make a note of it and prepare and plan accordingly for future batches so you don't end up with, you know, overly thick soap batter at that moment. But there it is. And there's your uh, watermelon soap. Yeah. And there it is, a beautiful watermelon soap. And yeah, examples of false trace and emulsion and how to spot and fix all of these things when you think that your soapy journey is going wrong. Now, realistically, again, this is one of the reasons why in every blog and forum or soap making recipe or whatever you read, it will tell you to make sure that your lye and your oil stay within 10 degrees of each other because that's going to be the most likely reason why you are getting a false trace. 
So do keep that in mind when you are making soap and trust your instincts. If you know that you usually, you know, stick blend a batch of soap for 90 seconds before it hits emulsion and you notice a very thick batter like 10 seconds in, probably false trace. Trust your instincts or just, you know, pull the stick up and inspect it. And if it starts to separate, then you know that that's what you're working with and you need to continue, you know, stirring. And also remember that if it is not false trace and you've over stirred your batter, you can always add some water to your batter and loosen it up so you can still do most pours. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you got some good information from that. I hope you found it fun. I hope you enjoyed my musical stylings if I decided to leave them in, but I'm actually not a good singer. So that is probably something you did not enjoy. An extra big special thank you to my Sudzers. You guys are amazing. I've been watching you guys scheming and developing all of your products, your soaps and your cosmetics and whatnot in the Discord. And it's super fun watching you all collaborate and get together for all of those things. Very cool. And I'm very glad to see it happening. You guys are super awesome. And I am blessed every single day to have such a cool community. For those that are not Sudzers that have not like clicked the button and subscribed. I mean, hi, I guess I don't. It's weird, but cool. I'm actually out of here. I have a million and one things to do, and I can't do any of those things sitting in this chair. So thank you for joining me. I will see you all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye. Why are you so loud? Wanna see them dancing, walking around on those feet.